Welcome to What a Week, the podcast where we talk about the news that you should have gotten over the past seven days. My name is James Messer, as this show's right here. I am just a mere co-host in this party that is the What a Week podcast, because, of course, joining me as always is my delightful, lovely co-host, Miss Judy Messer. Hello. Hello. What a nice intro. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. It's my <laughs> it's my pleasure. I'm... I, I know what the right thing is to do. You know, I'm, it's a bad morning if he's like, and the battle axe is with me today. <laughs> I am Nufu. <laughs> I, I know what's going on there. So it is uh, it is now. I've got a nice week full of different stories we're going to talk about on this week's podcast. There are a lot of things that have gone on in the world and certain things that I want to go through that you just don't happen to see on the normal news shows. We see a lot with elections. We see a lot with natural disasters, but there's other news that goes on behind the scenes. And that's what we cover here on What a Week. Now we've had our, our own little amazing, interesting things that have gone on this week. I was gonna ask if you were gonna talk about that. I was, we had um, well, uh, something like a, uh, uh, you know, is it a nature type rescue thing going on? What in the world was that? <laughs> Anybody who has children or who has had to watch children knows that moment when you hear, there's something, followed by, you know, in the toilet, on the ceiling, crawling on the floor. In you know, you car. just stop for a minute. I'm always afraid it's going to be a roach. Like, don't ask me, children, because if there's a roach, you're on your own. Call the dog or something. Well, I can handle that part. So it started with... You have to come out here. There's something out here this on the is screen. The, on the patio. Yes, this was on the patio. Yes. And what we found was, uh, let's see if I can find a picture of this for everyone to see. This is what we found. I don't know if you can tell. It's actually a hummingbird. It is. Poor little guy. He In my was, hand. For some reason, <laughs> he had come into, he had come up to the screen and his very long hummingbird beak had had stuck through the screen and was caught. I mean, it was wedged. He was stuck on our screen. He could not get off. It was not coming he out. He was crying. Yes. Poor little, it was so sad. And and he was so tired. He wasn't even flopping around at that point. He was yeah, just kind of there exhausted. on the screen. So I went over, we were doing the excavation and I held him up. Yeah, you've got those are those are your hands holding that because I I don't know if that's I could. That's my French mannequin. I don't know if I do. That's not able. yours. That's, no, that's not my. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have pink on this week. And you had to go get the surgical scissors. Yes, I, and fortunately, this is one of the benefits. By the way, <laughs> it, it, you guys out there, if um if you're looking for that that perfect relationship. And I highly recommend someone in the medical field because <laughs> they have all kinds of little scissors and things that are medical related. Clean, never used. They oh, were never course. used. No, they were never used. Right. But uh, but they're nice. I keep them in my toolbox. So well, because they're so little and pointed and right. they're very precise. So of course I grab the scissors. You've got now the poor little guy. And he's trying to struggle now because people are holding on to him. Right. But I think he's going to eat him. He's stuck. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> so I start cutting. You know, around the beak, that wasn't helping. That wasn't loosening things up. That wasn't working. And his beak, I tried just pushing on the beak. It's a very soft little beak. It's, it's, I thought right. it would I mean, be this really, hard it's thing. It's like the size of a needle. It's so small. It but is. It's not it, hard like that. It was almost like plastic. Right. Where you could, it was very malleable. It's very bendable. So I tried, you know, just barely pushing on it. And that wasn't going to work. You were, I was going to break the beak. So, Ultimately, you were this good example that you've got him turned to the side. So I got just enough room to get one of the edges of the scissors in there, um, like like a heart surgeon. And and if you can see these hands, these are not. <laughs> and of course, heart surgeon hands. You have myself and all the children around you. Yes. Be careful, <laughs> Daddy! Don't hurt him. <laughs> like no pressure. One one's taking pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I managed to snip just right next to his beak and and avoided clipping him. So that was good um, and got just enough there. That that loosened it up enough for him to slide right out and, and off well, he Well, we went. were scared because, you know, they're so small and they run out of energy really quickly. Yeah. So we were worried he wouldn't be able to move or anything. But the minute he got out and I opened my hand, I mean, he was gone. Boom. See ya. You know, he got home late and his wife was like, uh, where have you been? You would not believe what happened. I got stuck in a screen. And she was like, mm-hmm, right. <laughs> I try to use that one. It doesn't work very well. 
So the the stuck in a screen excuse is gone for me now. I've got to come up with something. But you else. know, we I guess I don't know if we have hummingbirds in Miami. I never saw one. Right. But when we came up here, everybody has hummingbirds around. Right. So we have a little feeder in the backyard, and we've seen them far away. We've tried to catch them on the camera. Yeah, we've set up cameras in in slow mo, and now my son has put some videos on YouTube that has them coming up to the. The, the feeder. It's such and a small, it, it's like an inch and a half long. They're it's so just tiny. the tiniest little bird. Yeah. It was beautiful. So I was glad he was okay. Well, that that was our very exciting uh, what a week news. I don't like being part of the news, but that one was, that one's a little, little odd. You don't run into that every day. And it's odd that I was even home to see that one. So and thank God it was not a roach. It was not. Thank goodness it was not a roach. <laughs> so in the same vein of, of working with animals and looking at uh, things in nature around us. I thought I would start our stories this week with what a fish. And this is a story uh, from Boing Boing, boingboing.net. Make this so you can see the the entire URL here. There is at the National, the, the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, they have a new exhibit up that is all about x-rays of fish. Why? Because <laughs> it's Because it's fascinating. Okay. Because it's, but I mean, was there, is it like an evolutionary reason so we can get a better idea of how we evolve from fishes or what have you? Well, the fishes that they have up and, and what they're doing with them is, is it sounds just kind of boring, but, but fishes have such very interesting bone structures. They're very tiny bones, and all of them are so different in how they've gone. I guess there is an evolutionary type study that can be done. I mean, that's done. a fascinating picture. It is. It's amazing. And there is not just the the in real life exhibit you can go to at the Smithsonian to see this, but of course, online, there is a section in the Encyclopedia of Life that has all of these x-rays of the fish. So Look you at can, that. yeah, absolutely. So you can find some of these. Okay. What is that? That of course is, I have no idea. looks like a the, eel or something that is it's a it is the something it is a you you for us rob elis longus yes <laughs> it is a thing somebody said it's a hammerhead eel it kind of looks like that it does a little hammer and they've got others in here as well i just sort of picked the first one that was there how did they do this i mean it's not like they put the fishy up on the x-ray table well first you have to find out if the fish has insurance and then you <laughs> then you take them over to the x-ray place are you wearing any metal it's cold they don't have it's all it's not carpeted at all you have to get up on there and they ask them please hold still they're like i can't breathe yes i understand but you need to hold still and then they take his x-ray I have no idea how they how they did all of this. We had a fish when we were little called a glass fish. What's a glass fish? It, it was completely see through. Okay, you could see. I think I've seen those before. All sure. of it. Yes. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. So uh, I found that a fascinating thing. I I was one of those things where I start going through, and all the pictures are so unique that you end up Look going. At that one. Do you see that one that had like a beak? Well, I did Come not see that one. That scroll had down. One. That one right there. You see that? I do see that one. What is that? That of course is the. Atris tostius tropicus. <laughs> Why don't they put the real words, the real names of these things? A garfish. I don't. <laughs> what? But that's really neat. This is it's quite remarkable what they were able to do with these, and they're out on Flickr, so you can get them on Flickr and see the the whole thing and really get a feel of the detail they got with with these X rays. It's quite remarkable to see that. And I just thought that was an interesting one because I started clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. Yeah, they're really fascinating when you start going through them. They are. I think uh, one of the things that I was going through this week, I, I tend to have these themes that come up over and over and over again. And it seems like I was getting a lot of nature stuff this week. So somehow in the big picture of, of the universe communicating to me with the hummingbird somehow came back to that. And I thought that was an interesting one. You're one with nature this I wouldn't week. Go that that's far. nice. That's, that's, that's really pushing it a bit. But there you go, nonetheless, seeing all of those x-rays that are there. Our next story this week is, what an angry red spot. And we're talking specifically about the zit I got on my, I was gonna say, on my nose earlier. I don't know where this is going. No, this is about the sun. Uh, this week, the their solar flares have really started up. I've been hearing a, a lot about this. Solar flares, of course, um, the, the sunspot cycle is an about 11-year cycle that 
goes from very minimal sunspots to very, very busy sunspots and then back down again. And it's been tracked over very, very, very long periods of time to have about that, that cycle of the sun. Nobody knows exactly what causes this cyclical sunspot and, and these types of flares to occur. But we're, are we in a bad one now? We're just starting. We're almost at the peak. The peak will be in 2013 the, is the estimate. And, and that's when things really get bad. And for people who are into amateur radio, this is a big concern. Of course, anybody who's doing any type of communication wirelessly, this mm -hmm. is a concern. Because when the flares hit, there are certain frequencies that you just can't use. You can't hear anything. The entire atmosphere is on fire. It is all crackly. And you can't get any communication back and forth. So usually in the, the periods where there's a low number of sunspots, the amateur radio operators love this because they can communicate over long distances and it's silent. You don't have any noise from the sun. And in, when it's very, very busy, you have a lot of noise from the sun. And what they're starting to get are some fantastic pictures of some of these spots. Now, this one was caught this week, uh, a big one in active region 1429. <laughs> um, just an amazing amount of of activity on the sun. That's amazing they can get these pictures. It is. And there was a really interesting picture here that they have of the entire sun. So you can see the the very busy, dark sunspot regions yeah, look of at it. That. Now there's this big flare that's up near the top of the sun. You see that one? Mm -hmm. That flare itself on the sun is the same distance as it is between the sun and the earth. The length of that flare. That's correct. So they, they have a, some some text here that's about 400,000 wow. kilometers, 240,000 miles. So that that single filament at the top there, that just gives you an idea of the scope. That is unreal. The sun's really busy right now. There's a lot going on with this. Uh, if you want to watch this on kind of a daily basis, uh, one of the ones that's used, especially by people who are doing a lot with um, astronomy, amateur radio, and those types of things you can find at spaceweather.com. This is a great site that every day you can get an update on what's going on with this, the sun. Look at that picture of the aurora, how beautiful that is. Isn't that is. amazing? Yeah, that gives you a very good example of just how busy it has gotten with the sunspots. That the, is something I'd like to see. The aurora borealis. Well, we, we can see that in Florida, sure. We'll just no. step outside tonight <laughs> and have a look. But okay. they say when it gets more active like that, you do see them yes. a lot more to the south. That's right. It can even come as far as, in some cases, South Carolina, sometimes Georgia, if it's very, very active. That would just be amazing to see. Well, we'll go visit your people in Canada and, <laughs> and go see what's up with them. Hey, everybody. That's right. So we could we could always go through and, and look at that. I think that would be worthwhile to see someday. But they have updates on the... the um, on the spaceweather.com website. The solar wind, of course, is it's busy today. It's 661.7 kilometers per second on the solar wind with, of course, it's a density. It's such a massive scale. It's really hard to even, <laughs> yeah. you know, get a concept of it. And they have pictures of the sun. They'll show you exactly where the particular sun spots are on the sun that you should be interested in and looking at. You can see them all right there. Uh, the sunspot number, we're up to 104, and it gives you a daily update of how the sunspots have been since that time frame, how many spotless days there were. So a lot of these things on here that I have no idea what this means, but you can, of course, go through those pieces. Uh, a lot of great detail on what's going on uh, with some of these. Well, it's an interesting picture of photography of a planet, and it's and it squiggles associated with this. I was going to say, what is that? <laughs> well, because stars twinkle, but planets don't. Um, there's, there's, as, as it mentions on here, thermal irregularities in the atmosphere that refract their light. So they move around. And so there's a, there's a picture there of the planets moving around and how they, how they look when they're moving around Sirius and, and, uh, Polaris and Jupiter, those types of things. So amazing, a bunch of things. And this is another one of those websites where you just get in there and you're diving in and you're diving in at spaceweather.com. If we get to come back and have another life. I want to come back as an astronomer. Do you? Yes, I think I want to do that. I think that I'll would, do that next time. That'd be just fine. I think it'd be kind of cool. I'd be able to see some of those things. So that was uh that was one of those um another one of those that I got sucked into. And I once I'm like 10 minutes into a site I'm thinking, "Oh, this would be a good one for the podcast cuz I'm now lost." Right, right, right. In right. the website. It's a good It's a good screening tool. It's always a good screening tool to go through there. Well, this next story is a bit of a follow-up 
on something that we did a number of months ago. Not really a follow-up, but I guess an adjunct. Is it about cheese? It's not. That was that was a great story. That was a great story. There are some good cheese stories that I just haven't put on here. <laughs> cheese and chocolate, I think, is a... We'll have to have more it. of those. We just have the little wine right here. It's the true. The little cheeses. This one is about a concert, specifically of an orchestra. And this one happened to be in Chicago, again, from boingboing.net. Uh, talks about a fist fight that was going on during a concert with the I think among grown between grown up people between grown up. This isn't no. This isn't like somebody went to Toby Keith and now they're they're the boys got a little. Somebody took his red solo cup right, and now they're fighting each other over that piece. No, this was the Chicago Symphony, and apparently, what? There, yes, apparently there was a bit of a problem at the Chicago Symphony. Somebody started having. A actual fight at the Chicago Symphony during the symphony. For real. For real. Really? So what they oh, what they did <laughs> here it is. What they did is um, the but the conductor cool as a cucumber. He got to a quiet spot during the the different. Look at him. Movements. That's a serious. Oh, he's not messing around. Conductor, yes. Oh yeah. So it was between movements. Or as as they're going, and of course between movements, there's a there's a bit of a of a pause, and then the next movement starts. So this fight was starting uh, up as the second movement was ending and was calming down. Of course, people are like, "Is there a medical problem? Is something wrong up there?" Um, and uh, and the the conductor Ricardo Muti looked over to I think they were in like a, a section that was up in this private booth area, and and shot hit shot them a look. <laughs> and then turned around and began the next movement. If that's the look like your dad would give you in yes. church when you were kicking the seat in front of you, that means you had better stop right now. The victim had a cut on his forehead. The other guy got out of there before the police arrived. See ya. Wouldn't want to be What were they fighting about? Well, one person obviously was complaining that the second movement lacked the emotion <laughs> of the New York Symphony. And that person said, oh, no, it didn't. No, it Chicago, didn't. Chicago, New York, Chicago, New York. <laughs> and so and our pizza is better. No, it isn't. I think and it then, was really about pizza. <laughs> that was the been. final insult. Our pizza is better than yours. Boom. I said, we're going to throw down. I shall, I shall strike you in the news. <laughs> and then, and then that's just, just appalling. That's, that's terrible. Tingu Nai in the chat room properly asks, do they sell liquor at these? Yeah, I think they cut you off. At, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will cease uh, <laughs> distributing alcoholic beverages after the second movement. Because this always happens, doesn't it? You try to go to a nice concert. You're what dressed is going up, on? Your it's like, did your mother not teach you? Don't fist fight. Now, I, I travel a lot. I'm in airports a lot with the people that apparently also go to a number of these events. Um, yeah, they would. I, I can imagine a fight in an airport is completely. Airports are just bad. Just a bad place. It's just everybody's going down the drain at it's, the airport. It's a de-evolution that's taking place amongst us. Well, I can't imagine at a concert there would be the, that level of de-evolution. But apparently, yeah, they're kind of scrappy. Now, if you remember, there was a story we did a few months ago of a guy's cell phone going off. Right. And it kept going. And going and going. And he didn't even realize it. There was a big apology At that he did. At least that was an accident. Yeah, it was an honest mistake. Right. This this not so much. This. I wondered if the story was going like <laughs> his phone went off and the guy next to him got after him. For well, now we'll know because he, he booked it out of there and now we'll never have an idea. He's of out there at large. He's, he is. He's out there and doing it. So the I thought, well, yes, and, and perhaps we're going to keep here at What a Week, we will keep an eye on this horrible trend. Yes. Call us. Of, Call us. Of, Tell us the story. Give us the exclusive. Of symphonic ne'er do wells. Why I chose to get physical at the opera. <laughs> <laughs> we, we would like to hear from you. Well, so if that wasn't enough, uh, people getting angry and beating up on each other, I saw this interesting story that was about the work week this week. And what I found interesting about it is that the story was that. If we all went back, went back to a 40-hour work week, right. we would be much more productive. I agree with that. This I is, totally agree. This was a well-thought-out 
and, and well-documented story with like real numbers. This wasn't like an opinionated, I think it would be better if we did it. This <laughs> right. was somebody who went back and looked at traditionally where we started with the 40-hour work week, where that came from, how we managed to get to a 60-hour work week or more right. in some cases. And that's just become the expectation. That, exactly. You're a slacker what, if why? you do less. Uh, right. We're going to need you to come in on Saturday. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, no. Uh, the, this story goes through, it's it's quite extensive. And this is from alternet.org. A lot of good things going on there. And one of the things they talk about is how they came up with this 40-hour work week. So it used to be this that, that it's really the unions that pushed for this. When we were doing, in, in this country and in Europe to some degree, a lot of work that was very industrial, you know, after, after eight hours doing that, you're just exhausted. You're spent. You can't do anything else. So you had to be cut off somewhere, and the unions really pushed for that 40-hour work week. Well, then we moved into a more uh, uh, upper white-collar mm -hmm. knowledge-type jobs where you're sitting at a desk, you're providing some type of medical services, you're working on computer systems, you're working on whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And people said, well, you're not working hard now. You can simply do, you can do more. You can do 10 hour weeks. Right. Two, you're not 10 hour sweating. Days. You're not carrying right. breaks. You're not cutting things. You can do 12 hour days. You can do a lot more with this, but it turns out that's not actually the case. Because you're, you're working hard. Because you're working hard. And it was a, a set of researches that were done, research by the Business Roundtable in the 1980s said that you could get short term gains from going to like 60 or 70 hour weeks. Maybe there was a big project, there's a big push, but. When you do more than that, people are spent. And actually what mm -hmm. they found is six hours is really your optimal time. After mm -hmm. six hours, it's all downhill from there. Right, because you're starting to get tired. Yep. Well, when I worked in the hospital, what would often... Oh, that's just crazy <laughs> for hours. What would often happen is they come to you at the end of your eight-hour shift and say, we're really shorthanded. Can you please stay? And you feel terrible because you don't want patients to not they're, have care. They're sick people there. Right. And you don't want to leave your colleagues. Right. Sure. These are your friends that you work with every day. So you say yes. And I have done it. I've done the 16 hour shift. And I tell you when I stopped was when, and you might remember this, I was driving home, stopped at a red light and I fell asleep. Right. Just for that second. But the car behind me honked and I was like, <gasps> you know, because you're just so tired. Right. And I just realized it's not safe. I'm really not doing anybody any favors and definitely not yourself because you're tired and you'll and you'll burn out. The story that talked about this this optimal amount of time being eight hours being really your max was done by the U.S. military, who obviously have some skin in the game on this when you don't yeah. want the military to be tired, that found that when one hour losing just one hour of sleep per night for a week will cause a level of cognitive degradation equivalent to a 0 0.10 blood alcohol level. And I think a lot of people are walking around like that. I'm walking around like that. Yeah. And it's without the fun of a 0 0.10 <laughs> blood alcohol level. It's with there was all no of, party. There was no keg. Uh, there was no story. It's with all of the tired, but none of the fun. Um, and, and this person made a point. If somebody walked in drunk every morning, mm -hmm. you'd fire them. But if they walk in just tired... That's okay. But think about the climate of a workplace where your boss actually says, you know, once in a while, sometimes you have to stay late, you know, if there's something special going on or a different kind of circumstance. But for someone to say, it's too much, let's, let's end it here, go home, get rest, come back tomorrow, feel better. I think that creates an atmosphere where you feel like people actually care about you. Yeah. I think you're going to want to stay there longer, you know what I'm saying, for a longer period of years and be more dedicated. It, because when somebody just drives you into the ground, you're not going to want to stick around. And, and in the chat room, we're seeing this. Uh, this this PFP fits Texas. I think that's probably close to what it is. It says in the Navy, we had 12 on, 12 off, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. If uh, um, we in Iraq worked 70, 80 hours a week, someone else said. So this is, it's not uncommon, which is exactly why this, this, this particular story was on the web. Mm -hmm. This is now normal for everybody, not just military, not just people in knowledge type jobs, not just people in hospitals. Hospitals are crazy with doctors working 24 hour shifts. Right. I don't and it's want, just, it's wrong. I don't want that doctor. Uh, no, you don't. Nobody wants that doctor. No, and yet don't. there they are. Extremely common.
to and, see those types of things. But people feel like they have to do that in order to keep a job. Yep. Yep, that's the thing. So the question at the end of this st study, and you can see I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling for those of you that have the, the video podcast or that uh, aren't listening on the MP3, is saying, how do we get back to a 40-hour week? And of course, that's the problem, is that how how are you supposed to now change the societal expectation and, and organizational expectation of well, that piece? But this is the beauty of a free market society, is yep. the beauty of capitalism, though. If a company establishes that like this is how we're going to treat the people that work here this is our boundary we want you to be productive happy safe everybody's going to want to go there that's right if you're going to disregard people and not treat them well and not be respectful of their time yep they're not going to stick around and you'll eventually go under that's right I've told you a million times I can always tell what kind of experience I'm going to have with a physician when I call the office if the person on the phone is like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you can just, you can tell nobody's happy. It's not going to be good. But when that person is like, sure, how can I help you? Let's see what we can do for you. You get the feeling that they're being treated well and therefore they're going to treat you well. And that's the kind of place I like to support. When you, when you look at that, I, I don't know if that's ever going to get back to a point where we're going to be able to do that. I, I, I'll probably cut down to 100 hours a week. Maybe that's what I'll do. That'll be my part. I'll go from 120 to 100. Um, the, but having, having it go farther than that seems almost impossible. I think, I think it's the has to really come, again, from not necessarily unions, but from the employees. Mm -hmm. No, it's 5 o'clock. Right. I'm they need to start saying Good day. No. You should have thought about that at 10 o'clock this morning when we had our meeting. It's 5 o'clock. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Talk to you later. Uh, and that's one of the things I think that people need to get better about their options. There's so many people I talk to that have no options. What am I going to do? I can't do that. They'll fire me. Mm -hmm. Fine, fire me. I'm going to go somewhere else. Right. That's that's really the benefit. Well, let's from from that from that. Uh, how many hours are you going to work a week? From that work side, let's jump to the play side. This was a story uh, that I found. What a game of tag. <laughs> game of tag. What could be more fun than a game of tag? And this is from tag-challenge.com. Have you seen this? I have never heard of this. That guy looks like a bandit. He is. He's the suspect. Oh, He's okay. the bad guy. <laughs> Let's go to the tag-challenge.com website. That website is one that is set up where in, on March 31st, because today is March 17th, isn't it... Uh, isn't it? Um, it's the St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Yes. I was going to say it's the Green Day. No, that's a different thing. <laughs> That's a band. It's, it's a band. This is um, <laughs> this is something happening on the 31st, and it's only in certain cities. So um, sorry, Topeka. It's only in Washington, New York City, London. Are we chasing thieves? What Stockholm, is this game? And Brat Bratislava, Bratislava, Bratislava. Where that's is in Slovakia. Oh, that's awesome. And I only know that because I read it. <laughs> this is a a tag. There are bad guys in that in those cities walking are they around fake in those bad cities. Guys? They're fake bad guys. Oh, okay. This is a, this is a study to see, and this is really put together by a number of of law enforcement organizations, government organizations, and and really private citizens that have said, "What if suddenly worldwide we had a manhunt? Could you really find somebody using the net?" using okay. people. Now, are they dressed like that? Do they Are they wearing a little Lone Ranger mask and I, carrying no. a bag that has a dollar sign on it? <laughs> no, they're, they're not. Do they yell out, you can't catch me, coppers? Not going to get me, see? <laughs> <laughs> I'm much too fast for you, coppers, see? Because that would be easy. So you're saying they're, really, they're dressed normally, but their picture's been distributed. Yes. Okay. And you'll have an image. You'll be able to see this. And the deal is if you can photograph the bad guy Upload the picture, and that's him. Get five thousand dollars. So there's a real I wish reward. They had that game here. It's a fake guy, but a real reward. Well, we can go. Let's hop on a plane. We'll go to Washington D.C. and hunt for the bad guy. <laughs> okay. You know, we we can find him somewhere. Uh, all of the the information you'll need about the contest itself is on tag-challenge.com. The idea is that there are jewel thieves that have now stolen the diamond. And they're somewhere. It's the world's third most expensive jewel, the Adley Diamond, from the Overholt Showroom in D.C. And now they're in five different cities. you got to go find them. 
They should do something like this at Disney World. Wouldn't that be fun? Just go run around Disney World looking for the bad guy. Well, we do the same thing. I'm looking for Mickey. Where is he? He's right, be instead of a hidden somewhere. Mickey, you could. He really is a hidden Mickey. Right. Well, it's kind of hard to hide a Mickey, isn't it? I'm just saying. <laughs> he gave me cover. No, <laughs> we're not gonna. That. Mickey's not <laughs> not gonna do that. It, it, that's one of the things I think it's, a, it's an interesting study. I'm really interested in seeing what the results will be from this to see how long did it take for someone to find this? Were there groups of yeah. people that got together in those cities to go after them and disperse? And I'm sure there will be clues and other things to go after at that point. But what, it, what an interesting study to see. If I were in law enforcement, I would be very interested oh, in Oh, yes. That. And that's why if you go to the Tag Challenge website at the bottom, is an about, and you can see the U.S. Embassy, the Institute of International Education uh -huh. is part of this um, Department of State, U.S. Department of State, um, the U.S. Embassy in Prague. There, there's a lot going on here with uh, organizations that are trying to find out, is it even possible to find the bad guys this way? So maybe we can do this. Maybe we don't need cameras I everywhere think, on every corner. And I think corner. the answer is yes, because look, a little video goes viral. Yeah. I mean, and it's seen by millions and millions of people. You could definitely, I think you could definitely do that. We'll find the jewel thief. Especially so. if there's a, you know, reward involved. Well, I'll take the cash money, baby. <laughs> I'll take the money. More than happy to. It's one of those things that once you start once you start getting a bunch of people that maybe get your posse together, now you're running all over the place trying to find the bad guys. It'll be interesting to see what they're able to do once they once they find them. I that would just be fun. Can't wait to hear that story. Well, uh, that comes to the end of a, another week's worth of What a Week news. Of course, if you'd like to see other weeks and, of course, follow us on what we are doing, you can visit our website at whataweekpodcast.com. You can, of course, join us uh, every Saturday morning at 1130 Eastern Time, where we stream this live over the net and talk to our chat room and get feedback from you. So you're welcome to join us live. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter, where I announce that we are going live on Twitter. My handle is whatweek. You can find us there. And if you'd like to contact me directly, you can go to James at What A Week Podcast. We also have a Facebook page at facebook.com slash what a week. You can always see what's going on there as well. And I also will announce there when we're doing things live. You can, of course, go to iTunes as well. We've got links on our website for iTunes and RSS feeds. So if you'd like to have this, just download it automatically so you can take us with you wherever you go. You can do that as well. Well, hopefully this, this week coming up is not going to be one where we're going to find more hummingbirds stuck in our screen but, but i know i hope not i hope not too. or any roaches well i'll see if i can find a roach story <laughs> no for no. us next time well that and we'll go through those stories and many more next time we'll see you next time on what a week bye everybody